Council Member Yang. Mr. Chair, I didn't really have uh, prepared remarks on this, but uh, with regards to this uh, talk of about the lane reductions, um, you know, myself and other council members have been in intensive uh, talks um, throughout this process, um, and I can tell you that uh, at the end of the day, I mean, the the final word on that was from the state of Minnesota Department of Transportation, saying that you know that just wasn't going to happen, and so we have to work within those confines. Um, but you know, as uh, Mr. Byer said. I mean, I'm looking forward to uh, you know the developments that can happen there because um, you know he described it pretty well with regards to the Harrison neighborhood and just the challenges uh, related to commercial retail that uh, needs to happen there for it to become you know this vibrant, uh, self-sustaining and uh, self-supporting uh, neighborhood. And, um, you know, with Southwest LRT um, on the south end and um, you know Botno on the north end, you know it's. It's going to be surrounded by uh, light rail, but hopefully the development uh, comes with it just um, to make it, you know, that much uh, better as a neighborhood. And, uh, I, I truly appreciate um, Sean Pierce and the folks at uh, HNA for just, you know, being so engaged in this process and, um, you know, holding folks accountable and also pushing uh, the agenda of the Harris neighborhood to, you know, improve um, the neighborhood to the extent in which uh, this can be a great win for everyone, you know, with regards to the two light rail lines that are going to go through there. Um, so, you know, with with all that stuff being said, I mean, I, I, my sense is that good folks in North Minneapolis really do want to see this uh, line go through and that uh, they want to see um, all the pluses or all the advantages that come with light rail um, come through, not only for the Harrison neighborhood, but for the neighborhood uh, north of there as well. You know, and I mean, my only regret is that uh, this line didn't cut through more of North Minneapolis so that more of North Minneapolis would benefit from it, especially, you know, let's just be honest, I mean, especially the folks up in Ward 4 even who are, you know, further away from it. But, you know, even the good folks in the Jordan neighborhood and also the Hawthorne neighborhood, uh, it doesn't touch upon those neighborhoods uh, as well as I would have liked, but, um, you know, such is life. Thank you. Any further? Thank you, Mr. Chair. I don't know if anyone has moved the item. I'm happy to, to move approval of the item, but then do have a brief comment. Oh, please. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Um, so, I, I mean, I, as Councilmember Yang said, it, um, I think this is such an important project and a good investment for our city. Um, and I'm grateful for all the work that our staff has put into this and the council members in this area. I do think that this project is not realizing its full potential for the city of Minneapolis. and. Um, that's because we're still planning these huge transportation investments for too short a time window. We're looking at now, we're looking at 10 years in the future. Our, trans our traffic models assume that people will continue to drive at their current rates. And we know um, that if we design our transportation system to make it easy and inexpensive to drive, they will. It's called induced demand. And we're creating a transportation system that if we were really looking out 50 years and acknowledging all of the consequences of designing our road system for people to be able to drive quickly through our neighborhoods, long distances, the consequences for our climate, the consequences for our health, the consequences of urban sprawl to our region's economy, the negative impacts on city neighborhoods that see the, that daily um, traffic flow, the air pollution that our children are breathing, all of these things matter when we're making these big decisions. And so I'm disappointed that um, MnDOT was unable to be able to support more lane reduction. It's giving us missed potential for redevelopment. It's lessening our city's tax base in the future. We're building for the status quo, not for a future that um, really prioritizes transit, biking, and walking, and not for a future that prioritizes the kids in our city neighborhoods over people driving long distances. Um, and so I really, again, I'm supportive of this project. I'm glad that we've been able to come together to get to this point. Um, but I wish that when we were making these very large infrastructure investments, again, we were looking out to that 50 year future and planning for those kids in our neighborhoods um, that we uh, really need to change, change the status quo um, so that they don't continue to see the consequences of their decisions. Um, thank you. The item has been moved. Uh, do we have any further comments? Councilmember Gordon. Thank you. Uh, and I just want to be able to complain a little bit um, about the, uh, the some of the same issues. Um, 
And uh, interesting, while we were up here, somebody sent us an image from uh, Apple Valley of what it looks like to have transit down the middle of a seven lane uh, road. And it totally looks like a suburban concept. It totally looks like something that doesn't belong in a dense city. It totally looks like something that's never gonna get us the commercial node that we want, that we're talking about if you have this massive number of lanes. And, and we talked about six and maybe six is tolerable, but when you look at all the intersections, it becomes seven. And for some reason we need dedicated left turn lanes everywhere and two through lanes going. And it's not uh, where we need to go or, or where we should be going. And I, I guess I understand that it's Department of Transportation didn't want to see that happen and was concerned about it. Um, I got to hear a lot of these concerns about University Avenue when we were putting the green line down there and what's going to happen and what are we going to do and, and what's it going to mean to the city and nothing's ever going to work again. And now even when you're driving on it, it seems like things are moving smoothly and it's fine and, and there was a reduction in lanes. Um, we've seen it on many other roads where we decide to do that too. And it, and, it's, and it works out fine. People um, go on their little road diet and they uh, um, figure out what to do. And maybe we need more of a massive um, effort to do that. Um, I, uh, but, um, so I would like to push back on that. I also had high hopes that we might come up with some way to do some kind of grade separation so the pedestrians could have be much more creative. And if you look down, we didn't hear the full presentation or see it, but if you look down further, um, there's apparently money to create new bridges to go over railroad tracks here and to, to get something over a, um, a freeway down there um, when the, and the line's going on further, but when it's coming through Minneapolis and we're worried about the Harrison neighborhood and we wanna make better connections across there, it seems like it's gotta all be at grade and we're not doing anything. Somebody did mention a pedestrian overpass and wouldn't that be wonderful? Sometimes those are tricky because people don't wanna use those and it's more time consuming to go up and over, but at least it might've been a gesture or even just down down a little for the train or the road and up if we're reconstructing the whole road, I don't know how much more it would cost, but probably something like that is a lot cheaper than having to build a new bridge for the for the trains um, over a freeway um, down the road there later. So it's, it's just frustrating. Um, it's a bit of a missed opportunity. Um, I love the idea about every tree one for one replacement and hopefully we can do that. Maybe we can find some money along the way and some pressure along the way, or maybe if we keep talking about this, nothing's been built yet. Um, it, we're, it's okay to dream and be hopeful and optimistic. Maybe we'll see a lane disappear down down, down there somewhere before it actually gets put in. So uh, hopefully uh, if more people can talk about that and, and bring that up, um, it's, I, think, I think it's great that we're building out our system and we need to. And uh, I've, I've often wished we could put conditions on our consent and I've often been told by our attorneys and others, you don't get to do that. So I guess I can't do that, but um, at least I can voice my concerns and my issues here and they can maybe be carried back and we can look at that as we move further into, into design. Thank you. Thank you. Um, any further commentary? Um, I think a fair amount has been shared both in, by way of testimony from the community and comments from my colleagues. I know some of those comments fall within our range. Uh, the, the certain design approval that we have before us, subsequent design uh, that, that is uh, to follow, and even areas that are probably even outside of the project scope but are directly related to it. I think we wanna make sure that these comments are heard uh, and remain instructive throughout the whole process. Um, I really wanna thank the people who have came forward from the community. Uh, it really amounted to a very thoughtful array of considerations and I. I think because it was so well thought out, I think it will be instructive and it will be impactful in terms of how we move forward with design. It's not built yet, as Councilmember Gordon has pointed out. And uh, we do not take these uh, conversations uh, gratuitously. They are important. So I thank you for that. And I thank you for my comments, uh, comments from my colleagues and the attention by staff that's been put forward to this and will continue to do so. Um, and I should note it's been a multi-department effort and I think it'll benefit from that immediate attention and, and hopefully that attention carries through we do want to make sure that this is a multi-benefit uh, investment uh, given the dollars that are included and not looked upon solely as a siloed uh, transit infrastructure. With that, um, I will move, uh, it's been moved. All those in favor, say aye. Aye. Dissenting name, and we have passed a resolution of approval for this level of design. On item one, uh, the municipal consent for the Blue Line uh, LRT uh, extension. Council Member Yang. Uh, thank you, Madam President. Um, I'm speaking to this uh, 
feeling like I have a sense of where the vote is going to uh, go, but um, I wanted to say that um, I'm, I'm voting against municipal consent for the Botno light rail line today. And, um, you know, I just want to point out that I'm not interested in relitigating the stops, the routes, or the process, but there are things that I would like to have seen differently. And I know that this is not the time for that. Uh, I want to uh, start out by just uh, thanking the Met Council and the Botno Project Office led by Dan Solar, who is in the audience at this point, and uh, his staff as well as uh, our staff at uh, Public Works, especially Don Flom, who I see in the crowd. And um, I, I know that we will be able to make the best out of this project together. Uh, my concerns today are very specific, and I'm addressing my comments to the states, including the Department of Transportation. Uh, there have been three pedestrian fatalities on Olson Memorial Highway in the Fifth Ward in the last three years. Uh, this is in addition to numerous automobile accidents, several of which have been fatal. Olson Memorial Highway needs to be shrunk. The neighborhoods I represent are not measured by the throughput of suburbanites. The neighborhoods I represent are more than high-speed entrance and exit ramps to downtown Minneapolis. The neighborhoods I represent are defined and measured by the health, safety, and well-being of my constituents. Shrinking the number of lanes on Olson Memorial Highway was one of my biggest concerns about this project and one that was raised by the city earlier last year. That request was denied by the state. Uh, my constituents' lives are worth more than the expeditious commute for someone from Buffalo, Rockford, or Plymouth. This enormous project should strengthen the ward I represent. It should promote development and it should make people safer. I urge the Department of Transportation to reconsider and to consider the lives of my constituents, the opportunity to promote development on the north side, and I ask them to reconsider their decision and shrink Olson Memorial Highway. Councilmember Gordon. Thank you very much, uh, Madam President. And uh, I did raise this issue about how totally unacceptable the seven lane, six lane configuration was at Hiawatha when I supported this um, when it went through committee. Uh, since then, I'd say that my concerns have only um, been magnified. Um, I had assumed that this proposal went through our uh, um, pedestrian advisory committee and that it had some sign off in the bicycle advisory committee. Um, and then I got a memo from the pedestrian advisory committee expressing their concern and recommending that we vote to deny municipal consent. Uh, they say it very well, and I'm just going to take up some of my time to read what. Um, I received from them and maybe all the council members did. The Pedestrian Advisory Committee strongly recommends that the City Council vote to deny municipal consent for the Blue Line extension as proposed due to the six slash seven lane Olson Memorial Highway required by MDOT. A six lane roadway, regardless of pedestrian enhancements, is incapable of meeting the city's transportation and equity goals for the immediate and surrounding areas. If built as currently required by MDOT, it will be a dangerous place for pedestrians, a barrier between neighborhoods, and a powerful disincentive to use of the intended centerpiece of this project, the train. A project of this scope represents a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity to truly reconnect the neighborhoods of North Minneapolis, enhance the safety and comfort of non-motorized users, and provide a street design that informs the type of development that maximizes the two Blue Line stations, as well as the planned Royalton Station. The City of Minneapolis, the Metropolitan Council, and Hennepin County have active plans to improve regional and citywide transportation options within North Minneapolis with walking, biking, and transit projects beyond the Blue Line extension. In total, these improvements should enable Olson Memorial Highway to become a premier urban street that does not simply allow for pedestrians, but prioritizes them above regional motor traffic. The PAC is prepared to engage the City, Metropolitan Council, and MDOT on plans to allow a reduced lane roadway configuration. That's the statement from the Pedestrian Advisory Committee, and I agree with it 100%. Uh, in fact, it only it only bolstered my position that this was a big mistake that, that shouldn't happen. Also, between the committee and now, I had the opportunity to reach out to the Commissioner of the Department of Transportation. Uh, my response from him is if he was interested, he was going to look in it, look at it, and then he consulted with some of his engineers, and he came back saying, this seems to be the consensus. All the engineers think that it, the traffic engineers, you know, transportation engineers seem to think it needs to be a six lane, uh, seven lane um, highway as it's going down here. Well, I wish that he had been more open to looking at it and problem solving, and I think that he doesn't understand the magnitude uh, and the concerns maybe that the city has at this point 
And it's important, I think, that we listen to more than the traffic engineers and the transportation engineers whose lives are all about how many cars can you get through an area in the shortest amount of time. Uh, and that is a priority. I also had the opportunity and took the opportunity to go out of my way during rush hour to ride on Oatsa Memorial Highway and check out how it works. Um, lo and behold, in Golden Valley, right before you get to the city, it's a four lane road. Cars are moving smoothly, everything's going effectively. This is rush hour in the morning. Suddenly when you, meet, when you get to Minneapolis, it expands dramatically uh, to, uh, to six lanes. And then when you're making left turns, seven lanes, um, cars are still moving fine. And actually when I looked at it every time, there was plenty of room for us all to gather in two lanes instead of be spread out in three. No stoplight failed when we came to a chance to go. All the cars who were there stacked up, made it through um, very easily with, with lots of time to spare. Additional point, besides my little uh, investigation on my own, my talk to the commissioner and the public uh, uh, pedestrian advisory committee, um, was then I heard about what Crystal was getting. Um, they were going out to get municipal consent from other cities. And lo and behold, a pedestrian bridge is on the table and is going to be built. So if you're out in Crystal, you don't ha have to traverse uh, the roadway. And, and it's not so horrible. They're trying to enhance it for pedestrians as well. But in the city of Minneapolis, when we're likely to have more pedestrians, in fact, if this works at all, and we're able to have the kind of development that we want and, and the connection reconnecting neighborhoods, and it probably won't work if it's going to be built this way, um, but out in Crystal, they're getting a pedestrian bridge. Why, why couldn't we get that at Van Light Boulevard or, or Penn or something? Why can't we look at more en enhancements or, or something like that? The last thing is I, I just kept reflecting back on uh, the light rail lines that we have right now. Um, two of which touch my ward, which I'm very familiar with, often ride the train. We took one approach on, on, uh, on, the, on the blue line, extension one out to the airport. We said, oh my goodness, there's a really big highway here that the Department of Transportation probably needs and we have to move all these cars back and forth, back and forth. Let's not touch it. Let's just leave that wide open in place and we'll build our light rail next to it. So we even make a bigger distance between the neighborhoods and a bigger disconnect. Well, lo and behold, on the side with the light rail, Property values have gone up. There's development that's occurring there. But generally, and certainly on the east side, without the light rail, we've been struggling. And we've got complaints and complaints about why is it so hard for me to cross this? Why do we have this Hiawatha and then the light rail? Um, and we've had accidents, public safety issues, concerns. Now, check out the next line that we built, the green line. We said, oh, let's take away some traffic lines. We're going to put this on University Avenue. In fact, let's take all the cars off Washington when it goes through the University of Minnesota and make it sort of a transit plaza pedestrian area. Um, I get nothing but rave reviews about that. Ridership is higher. Huh. Use is going well. You can still travel by vehicle on that patch of university, even with the reduced lanes. And, it's, and, and people don't complain about that. I haven't seen any problems with that either. Cars have found other ways to get around it if they have to, um, and it's working really well. I think we need to take a stand here and we need to say um, this isn't acceptable for where it's going through Minneapolis. We've already made enough concessions. Slowing the cars down uh, a, a little bit, and they're already slowed down to 40. Um, and what we're trying to do now and call pedestrian enhancements isn't enough. And I am um, not willing to support it here at the council. And I hope there's at least a few of us that can uh, join Councilmember Yang and myself and say we need to see a little more work uh, in this area and be taken seriously about this and not just ignore it. Councilmember Andrew Johnson. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I agree with uh, my colleagues, Councilmember Yang, Councilmember Gordon, on uh, the issue of design, and especially around shrinking the number of lanes. You know, in Ward 12, uh, we have probably, I think, the most light rail stops probably in the entire city, and it runs parallel uh, to a highway. And I see firsthand as people see the train coming and they decide to rush across the highway and try to catch it. And that's just having to rush across on one side from the uh, east side. Now imagine on uh, Olson Memorial Highway where you have people coming across from both sides. And when you have such a large highway uh, with so many lanes, that's a lot of distance people have to cross. And I do worry about the lives that are endangered in that process. And I think that from even a design standpoint, this is really outdated thinking. We're looking to see some development happening along the line. And when you have uh, such a large highway in front, I'm going to tell you, that's a struggle with developers. And I talked to developers uh, trying to get them to uh, put more up on the east side. And they say, well, we're in front of a highway. We're not in front of the light rail. 
So we're having a lot more of that development happening and a lot more interest on the west side of things. So I would strongly encourage MnDOT and the project team to uh, not let this be a settled issue, to revisit it, to really rethink this, to listen to uh, what you're hearing today, to look at the community, to think in a different way that uh, has been done before and really factor in human behavior and what's happening here and the interest overall comprehensively of the city of developing uh, a great corridor that doesn't divide the community but that adds to it. In terms of my vote today, I am voting yes on muni municipal consent. The reason for that is despite the flaws, just as there were uh, certainly council member Goodman knows with uh, Southwest light rail overall, uh, despite those flaws, I do believe that this offers more value to the city, uh, more positives than negatives. But this is a really large negative and I think it needs to be addressed and I surely hope it is and uh, support my colleagues uh, in their decisions as well and think that that's uh, an appropriate uh, statement. Thank you. Councilmember Wright. Uh, thank you, Madam President. I just want to you know, be clear about what's before us today. This is a 30% design approval. Um, when you do a municipal consent uh, uh, vote, it's not with conditions. Um, that's just sort of the way it works, and so that's how we have to vote. Um, we have to also take in context that there's a pre-existing condition uh, of the area that we're talking about in terms of pedestrian crossings uh, that are not favorable whatsoever. And then the question is, is current design moving in the direction of a net improvement or not? And so I think that's another thing to put into the backdrop of our consideration today. We also have to you know, step back and think about what we're voting on in terms of our regional transportation system and all of that uh, work that goes in by the multiple partners and their considerations on the, on the project uh, at this point. And so I wanna make sure that folks weigh uh, those considerations, what, really have, what procedure we have before us, the existing conditions that we're trying to modify and improve, and the, the sort of context in which we are voting as a regional uh, player amongst other players trying to create a system to support our economic uh, and transportation needs. And I'll be supporting this, of course. Any further discussion on transportation public works item number one, municipal consent for the Blue Line uh, LRT extension? Seeing none, clerk to call the roll. Council Member Glidden. Aye. Yang. No. Johnson. Aye. Quincy. Aye. Warsami. Aye. Goodman. Aye. Fry. Aye. Palmasano. Aye. Gordon. No. Cano. No. Wright. Aye. President Johnson. Aye. There are nine ayes and three nays. That item is adopted. <laughs>